Thank you. That was beautiful. I appreciate you playing. Let's pray. God, we ask that you lead us to the Christ child as we bring our very best gifts. Amen. So I want to ask everybody, what is your favorite Christmas carol? We've heard lots of them. We've sung lots of them today. And it doesn't have to be a church song either. What's your favorite? Shout it out. Mary, did you know? We heard that twice in Advent. It was so good. God rest ye, merry gentlemen. Great song. Silent Night. Silent Night. That's a classic, right? Can't have Christmas without that one. Anybody else? Bell of Woods by Garth Brooks. Bell of Woods by Garth Brooks. This is a new one for me. We'll have to look this one up on Google when we're done. Oh, Holy Night? Oh, it's a big one around here that nobody said but you. <laughs> All right, so mine is The Little Drummer Boy. None of you said that one. And I think it's because it was really popular in the 60s when I was little, and then there was a little cartoon that was maybe a little racist that's no longer on the air. You can all look that up after church, too. But I love the little drummer boy because the words are so easy. Parum pum pum. Anybody can do that. And it's got a catchy little tune, like God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. It makes you want to get up and move around. And carols historically were happy songs that involved dancing in a circle. Wouldn't our church look different today if during every one of our songs we all danced around the sanctuary in circles? But we didn't. Now, what I loved about the Little Drummer Boy um, increased this week, and actually two weeks ago, is I studied the lyrics of the song. Now, that song was penned by composer Catherine Kendicott Davis, who also wrote, uh, oh gosh, what's the song that we sing at Thanksgiving? Oh, All Things Now Living, A Song of Thanksgiving, that's the song. She wrote that one too. She wrote this song, The Little Drummer Boy, in 1941, when the world was at war. Now, historically, during wartime, a drummer would keep time, and the troops would march behind the drummer as they went from place to place. So the drummer not only had them march in time, but also would send messages to other regiments via the drum. Now the drummer had to be really brave because they don't have a weapon and they're at the front of the line. They're they're drumming and they're walking ahead of the troop toward the enemy line. Now the legend of the little drummer boy actually precedes the song. It happened in the Civil War. Nine-year-old Johnny Clem ran away from home to join the Union Army in Ohio. And they turned him down because he was only nine. Any of you who have nine-year-old grandchildren, don't underestimate them. Because he did not take no for an answer. He traveled to Michigan and he applied for the Army there. And they, of course, also turned him down because he was only nine. But he wouldn't go home. He followed the 22nd Michigan Infantry Regiment until they finally made him their mascot and gave him a drum. And he began to drum as they moved from place to place and to send messages. So is it a coincidence that in 1941, when the world is at war, that the composer Davis is inspired to have the drummer boy leading the troops meet the Christ child. And as everybody was expected to fall in line behind the drummer, what messages do we receive from that song? So I'm going to read the words for you without all the pum pums You're going to have to fill those in yourself. Here are the words. Come, they told me, a newborn king to see. Our finest gifts we bring to lay before the king, so to honor him when we come. Little baby, I am a poor boy too. I have no gift to bring that's fit to give a king. Shall I play for you on my drum? 
Mary nodded. The ox and the lamb kept time. I played my drum for him. I played my best for him. Then he smiled at me, me and my drum. Now, I don't think it's a coincidence that Davis composed these words that led all of those who were embroiled in war and brokenness and violence to meet the Christ child. Now, what can we learn from that song? First, the very first line, come they told me. That's a reference to the Magi, and we did not have the Magi in our readings this morning. It was in that last song, but not in our readings because we stayed in the Gospel of Luke. Luke has shepherds and angels, but no Magi. Matthew is where you'll find the Magi. Isn't it interesting that the voice of wisdom tells the drummer boy to come, come to meet the Christ child? I think there's a message there for all of us already. Then the drummer boy connects with the Christ child. He knows he's going to see a king, and when he arrives at a stable, he sees another poor child. He says, little baby, I am a poor boy too. He doesn't see divinity. He doesn't see a God that's far away or out of reach. He sees the humanity of the Christ child. He sees Jesus, and he sees himself. Little baby, I am a poor boy too. He makes that connection with the Christ child. We are all invited to make that same connection. And then he realizes he has no gift to bring. Now, I have a long and sordid sort of history with lots of different denominations. And I have heard more than once that we are supposed to give our all. We're supposed to give everything we can um, and we accept checks and cash and whatever, you know. We have to give everything. But it's interesting to me that this drummer boy does not give Jesus his drum. It's all he had. He had one possession, a drum, but he did not lay that down. Instead, he used the little he had to create a gift, the best gift to give to the Christ child. Not so much about sacrifice, friends, as it is about using what we've been given, whether it's much or little, to create something special with our lives because that's the best gift, the gift of your very life. It's not giving all your possessions or giving all of your money. It's all about what you create with your life as your gift for the Christ child. And then we see what happens. The baby smiles. Don't we all know what it feels like when a baby smiles? We know what it feels like when a baby's crying. We pick it up and go, oh, give it back to the parent. We don't know what we did to this child, but it doesn't like us. Make it stop. But when a baby smiles, isn't that the best? And the Christ child smiles at the drummer boy. He has received gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh from the magi, and we don't know anything about smiling at them. But he smiles at the drummer boy who brings his very best, who connected with the Christ child and created something out of so little. You know, we're all tempted to go to the mall or shop online and buy the very best gift and gift wrap it, and that's all good. But that's not a gift we can bring to the nativity. It's not a gift that we can bring to Christ. I am convinced that what God asks all of us to do is to create, to create something with our lives. And maybe today the only thing you can create is a smile. Maybe the only thing you can create are tears. There's a psalm that says that God collects our tears in a bottle. They're that precious. Anything that we create in our lives, from much or little, is the best gift. 
And so in a moment, we are going to listen to the little drummer boy. I've asked Patrick to take the words off and the video off. I don't want you to be distracted. I want you to imagine Johnny Clem. He's playing his drum. He's leading the troops, and he's leading us all to the Christ child. And when you arrive, what gift do you bring? 